Hello and welcome to Connected. On this show we look at local heroes, what it is to be successful and the price of following a dream. Heroes come from all walks of life. Our heroes don't wear masks, colourful costumes and save the world, but they have pursued their dreams or been part of assisting others to achieve theirs. Local football team Ipswich Jets have soared to great heights in the past few weeks and I'll be talking with the CEO about the journey to success and what is next for the club. I will talk to a legend of radio. Well, think a little more locally perhaps. Lower expectations maybe? And chat with a man who works with performing artists to make their dreams come true. So let's take to the skies, reach for the stars and get connected. But first up on Connected, as we do each and every week, it's time to find out what's happening in South East Queensland with radio guru himself, Hinksy. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. Are you ready for a uh, another big night of theatre? I'm looking forward to it, actually. This is a big show. Well, I, w I was going to mention Les Mis, because that starts very soon, but it's been announced that Singing in the Rain is actually coming to Brisbane in September next year. The tickets have already gone on sale, and this is going to be such a magnificent show. Now, who's, do you know who's in the cast? I do. The, the, it's a, a great cast, actually. Of course, we know the movie with Gene Kelly. Kelly, who also directed it, and of course Debbie Reynolds. Yes. But this one stars Adam Garcia, who you might remember was in the movie Coyote Ugly. And was also in the uh, the Broadway uh, West End uh, hit uh, Saturday Night Fever. Absolutely. Mm. Gretel Scarlett's in it. Erica Haynats, who's always a favourite of mine. She's now, last she role. was in Legally Blonde, I think. She was playing the aerobics instructor. And she was also in uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Ah, She there played... You know. uh, not Columbia, the other one. The other one. <laughs> yeah, the other one. You know Is the that the technical that? term for the role? That's the one. Yeah, That's her name. Yeah. And also, Brisbane's own uh, dance guru, Jack Chambers. You might know he won the first series of So You Think You Can Dance. So that's some of the cast. It is going to be absolutely amazing. Now, if you are in the first few rows in QPAC, you may need to take a raincoat because I reckon that uh, you could get a little wet because 12,000 litres of water will actually rain down on the stage at QPAC when they're doing the title song, Singing in the Rain. So Fantastic. it should be pretty amazing to see. Uh, I wonder if they will actually hand out uh, raincoats in the candy bar. <laughs> we'll have to <laughs> wait and see. If you want tickets, they are on sale now, qpac.com.au. All right, fantastic. Thanks for that, mate. Anytime. And welcome back to Connected. Well, those magic words. Ipswich Jets win the Intra Super Cup 32 to Townsville, Blackhawks 20. Well, the six tries to four victory was the first premiership for the Jets in their 33-year history after the club had previously failed in two Brisbane Rugby League and Queensland Cup Grand Finals. The Jets then faced the Newcastle Knights in the NRL Interstate Championship at ANZ Stadium on Sunday, October 4 in Sydney, where they again came out winners. Now the celebrations have subsided. Where to from here? CEO Wayne Went joins me. How are you, Wayne? Very well, thanks, Damien. It's great to talk to you. Congratulations to you and the club. Thank you, and uh, it's been a, a, a meteoric rise, and but <laughs> we're still on that, that high plateau right now. But uh, look, it's been a, a long journey, and to be honest, I'm glad it's over to some effect. Well, mate, as they say, you know, uh, it, 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 no one's an overnight success. No, and it has been a long time. As I say, I've been there probably uh, nearly three seasons now. So when I came on board, um, it's fair to say that we were doing things a little bit in a difficult capacity. So I wanted to try and change things. And um, we've actually we've balanced the books in a lot of respects. So I'm an accountant by trade, so right. not necessarily a footy head, but although I love my rugby league. So it's been advantageous that I've been able to turn the club around in some respects, particularly financially. Yes. And of course, we had a plan then over the three years to try and succeed on the field as well. And... Uh, Thank heavens that's occurred. Well, of course, you've got so much support now, but I mean, is it frustrating seeing that support come only when you win and not, uh, you know, there all of the rest of the time? No, it's probably, that's probably not a true reflection of how it works. I mean, the sponsors that we've had for a number of years, and you'll probably find that with high level clubs, they stay with you for, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've got those that stick. You have those that come in uh, when you win and they, and they disappear when you might be losing. But our sponsors have always been very, very good to us. And I think that the majority of sponsors we've had over the last few years are still with us. So we're probably unique in that respect. And the fan base as well, I guess. Yeah, look, the fan base is one of those things I wanted to bring in and to increase when I came on board. There were a number of KPIs. Obviously, our social media and our uh, experience in, in our community, we need to do more in that field. 
Um, our fan base has increased dramatically, whereas other clubs in uh, the same rugby league sphere, I hope we can get that out, <laughs> uh, where in fact um, have probably dropped numbers. So right. our gate receipts are up. And it's all about trying to make sure that our revenues are up and our expenses are down. Yeah, it's a difficult job because, I mean, not just for the players who spend hours and hours every mm. week practising and, and all of that, but also from the, your point of view, people behind the scenes who are working tirelessly to, to keep the, the club on that level. Oh, it is. It's a, a very, very difficult job. Uh, lots of time. I mean, I generally work six to seven days a week at this stage and I try to have a few weeks at the end of the year. Uh, my PA is exactly the same. We've got a development manager, so we've got quite a few staff. Um, particularly in the footy club, we'll have 30 or 40 staff, in fact, who get behind, there's about 150 guys in right. the club. So it's a big, big club and uh, lots and lots of work and trying to keep them all uh, heading in the right direction, can I say. Yeah, yeah. Is it uh, a difficult process uh, trying to be successful at, the, at this level of uh, football? Oh, very much. It's uh, the next step down from the NRL, so we're affiliated with the Brisbane Broncos and that's obviously really important for us. But it's all about creating pathways. So for those young people who play in our local region here, they can play for the Brothers or the Swifts or the West Ends, get into senior footy, again playing for those same clubs. Hopefully the better ones will come onto the Jets and then they can obviously go onto the Brisbane Broncos all without having to leave home. So they can still be living at Raceview or Flinders View and the reality is that they can actually then play for the Brisbane Broncos on the national stage. But again, it uh, costs a lot of money and mm. it's obviously a very, very time consuming. So they, those p guys in the, in the uh, teams are obviously very, very competent in what they do, and they have to give up a lot to do that. So um, it's, it's difficult for them and certainly for their families. Have we got a lot of ta young talent coming up through the ranks? Oh, we certainly do. Uh, you'll notice if you look at some of the NRL rosters at the moment, the Ipswich region, uh, this Western Corridor, is widely represented. Uh, and in fact, the Ipswich Jets take it on ourselves to actually represent right through to the border. So we have a lot of country boys, particularly from even places like Toowoomba, but far, far west of there, like the Quilpies and uh, the Charlevilles and those places. So we like to represent uh, most of the southeast and southwest Queensland. Yeah, with all of the uh, attention, is it hard to handle at the moment? Or <laughs> oh, it is, but it's a good thing to have, I suppose, yeah. Damien. I mean, the last thing you want is that no one wants to talk to you. Um, and being successful actually allows that, that we've got lots of other sponsors coming on board and uh, we're going to make, the, you know, make hay while the sun shines, so to speak. Fantastic. Well, of course, uh, you know, for many young people uh, out there in the community, I mean, these footballers are, are heroes, aren't they? Yes, they are. Um, and we've got some really good young men. Uh, when I first came into the job, I was always a bit unsure of how those guys would react to... Um, there is a certain amount of fame involved to it. But they've really reacted really well and uh, they, they are really good role models as well. Well, mate, I appreciate you joining us on the program today and congratulations once again. Thank you very much, Damon. I love being here and love USQ. Oh, we do. We love to see you here as well. And let's take a look at those final moments in the NRL Interstate Championship, courtesy of Channel 9 and the NRL. 15 short. Parcel dummy one way, went the other. Griffin. Look at his footwork. Right, Griffin. Griffin scores for Ipswich. He's had a monster of a year, Rod Griffin, and he scores a try on grand final day. 100 mile an hour, there's some good footwork and evasion here, but it's just really will. Get out of my way, come to the fullback straight over the top of him as well, and plants the ball down. No more deserving try scorer. Well, well done to the Ipswich Jets. Well done to the Walker boys and all the players out here. Very, very impressive, very enjoyable, entertaining to watch, but also with that hardcore... Queensland resilience in defence and they've all done their part. Great stuff. They can celebrate now. The state championships for the second year in a row, for the only two years it's been run, goes to Queensland. What a fantastic win and congratulations to the Ipswich Jets and also to CEO uh, Wayne Went who joined us on the couch. Well, my next guest knows what it is to work hard uh, to go uh, where the industry takes him and also with his Magic 882 scenario in place here in Brisbane. Here's our very own Greg Hinksy Hinks, mate. How are you? I'm here still. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's good to see you. Uh, of course, uh, it, radio is a volatile industry. It's, it's something you have to work really hard at, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it's been a, a hard slog, I guess you could say, having to move to country New South Wales. That's kind of where I began. And then, uh, you know, moving up the chain from there. It is difficult for people to get those right uh, foots in doors, I guess. is uh, Foots, that's a really good way to put it. It is, yeah. Clearly I work in radio. <laughs> Feet in doors. It is. So, you know, it, it's, it's difficult to get 
those contacts, but once you do, it kind of uh, makes it a little bit easier. Now, of course, I mean, even in radio, once you're, I mean, you were successfully with 97.3 for quite a, yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah, I was there for 13 and a half years, yeah. But then you saw the opportunity of doing a breakfast show, which is something that every radio jock aspires to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, of course, uh, you can make those decisions, but it doesn't always pan out, does no, it? No, absolutely not. Like, you know, I couldn't handle the, the black bags under my eyes after, you know, getting up at some stupid hour of the morning. I worked out that four o'clock in the morning is a good time to get home, not wake up. Yeah, well, that's true. So, you know, and then, so I came back to Brisbane. Brisbane's home. It's, yeah. you know, it's where I belong. It, you know, that, that's the, the amazing thing about this town is that, uh, you know, when I came back, the, the people that knew me from listening on the radio as well as, um, you know, the PR people in town and, and my friends were just so happy to have me back, which was just a wonderful thing. Well, most of them anyway. Well, apart from you. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. No, but it was actually really nice coming back and just getting that, that wonderful support from from not just my friends, but the, the greater community as well. Yeah, it's, it's a very difficult industry because it's time consuming. You have to work weird hours. Yeah. Um, and of course, as you said, you know, you've really got to be able to make those connections within the community to be able to put together a successful radio show. Well, I, I guess the, the thing about radio and I, it's like TV and everything in general, it's that co connection, that relationship with uh, the audience. And how they feel that they can only trust you, they enjoy what you do, they're entertained by you, they're informed by you. So it's all those kinds of things. It all kind of melds together and then you've got to listen to your bosses that they have a certain, uh, not a gender as such, but a certain direction they want you to go in and, and you have to conform within that but use that and also you know, express your personality at the same time. That's the, mm. the beauty of radio. It's, it's, you know, it is fun. Like, you know, even after the length of time that I've been doing it, it is still a fun business to work in. Uh, of course, we've been looking at uh, heroes within the program today. And I mean, uh, the Ipswich Jets, fantastic. You know, it goes Absolutely. to a lot of the sporting teams that do such great work all year round. Who inspired you to get into the world of radio? Funnily enough, it was someone we had on the show last week. Right. And uh, it was Jamie Dunn. Oh, okay. Because, uh, you know, aggro, because um, uh, when he was on 4BK, which became B105, I remember as a 12-year-old listening and just loving what they did. And uh, then it became B105 and uh, I continued listening for many years. In fact, I was telling Jamie after the show last week, I actually had a signed photo of the three people in that breakfast show, Ian Skip and Donna Lynch at the time, mm -hmm. and Jamie, beside my bed. I guess it's like one of those vision boards thing, things that you do nowadays, but that was what I wanted to do. And uh, then I ended up getting to work with him and it really was a wonderful experience. But yeah, what, he was the one person that really inspired me and then helped actually inspire me in person as well. It was, it was a wonderful thing to work with him. Well, of course, you're going to be inspiring a whole new generation of people, not from behind the microphone this time, but uh, on stage live. That's you're using the term very loosely, let me yeah. tell you. <laughs> well, I'm doing the show called uh, G'day Today. Essentially, it's a sequel from a show I did last year. It's a standalone show in its own right. And uh, 12 months ago, I worked at the Studio Theatre and Cafe mm -hmm. uh, doing this wonderful show called No News is Good News. And I got to play this horrible, horrible character. He was a lead newsreader in a newsroom. And it was so much fun. It was uh, a great environment. The, the team that we worked with were fantastic. And then we came up with this idea to do a sequel, which takes it to a morning TV breakfast show like the Today Show or Sunrise. And again, I get to play the same character, which is Glenn, who is a horrible, horrible person. This time around, he's married with a child and a little bit more mellow. So wow. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. But there's a lot of singing and dancing and... I'm not exactly sure how that's going to go. I'm just thinking of you with a child. Well, <laughs> do you know the thing about children in real life? Yeah. I can hand them back. That's true. That's very yeah. true. And you always remember those things. Absolutely. But it will be a wonderful show. We've been, uh, we're right in the middle of rehearsals at the moment. And uh, this time around, I, I got to negotiate my way out of the last show of singing. This time around, I don't really have much choice that I have to sing. So uh, if you want to see something that could be quite interesting, come to the show. Okay, uh, that'll be something to look forward to. Uh, yeah. And all singing, all dancing, Hinksy on mm, stage live. We'll check that out very shortly. Thank you very much for uh, talking to us in depth about your career. Thanks very much, Damien. Always a pleasure. We're going to take a break here on Connected and come back with a lot more about Heroes right after this. <laughs>
And welcome back to Connected. Well, Trevor Scobie is the founder of Queensland Entertainment, a company helping to showcase local and emerging artists from southeast Queensland. He's an artist in his own right, and he has a personal understanding of the journey that many up-and-coming artists he represents are now on. Trevor joins me in the studio. How are you, mate? Good. It's uh, wonderful to talk to you, and, uh, and it's a tough field, the old entertainment biz, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, there's a lot of people got to be switched on, I think. That's, that's the thing. You started out as a performer, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, I always say that I, I n had never learnt a guitar to make money, um, but yet here we are, and I'm, I'm, I've done that. But I don't think I've ever met anyone that's learnt an instrument in the idea that they're going out to make money. Yeah. So that's where it turns from being a hobby or an art form to an income. Was guitar the only instrument you learned? Or? Well, guitar as in six string and as bass, yeah. I, I never, I wasn't coordinated enough to have my legs going at the same time, so I couldn't play drums. Right. So, okay. <laughs> I think you were smart there because you don't have to pack it up. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> right, oh, yeah, true. Yeah, and you don't need a station wagon for guitar. Like no. <laughs> uh, why did you start Queensland Entertainment? Uh, I kind of fell into it. I was playing a lot of, of gigs in southeast Queensland and, and some of the venue managers had asked me if I had known of anyone that else that, that would be interested in playing at the venues and so I started dropping names and started organising people and I thought well I'm doing this and I'm spending a lot of time doing it so maybe there should be something in it. Um, and the whole idea of, of it was to keep everyone honest. I, be you know, I believe that uh, sometimes venue managers um, will just uh, grab at anyone to save dollars um, when there are good musicians out there that are professional in the way they perform and the way they act in, in, in front of um, the people that they weren't getting the right price. So I kind of wanted to make that balance. Yeah, and, and often they have to, to do it for love um, before they can get to that paid level. Well, there's only a certain amount of love you can do it for. I mean, there's a guitar costs a lot of money, strings, equipment, you know, time. It's um, it, it just seems like the first people that are asked to do charity events and to do uh, certain things are the musicians. And as much as they want to do it for the love of it and for the right reasons of, of charities and things, there are still expenses that they need to cover as well. So sometimes I think that gets a little bit stretched. Yeah, exactly. Uh, did you, uh, when you were sort of starting off as a performer yourself, did you have someone you, you know, thought was a, a mentor or um, inspired you? Uh, I, not when I was starting off. I think I met those sort of people later in, in life that had actually been there and, and um, did the world circuit. Um, a good friend of mine, Lee Novak, who played bass for Savage Garden and, and a few other musicians that I had worked with in the years. Um, gave me a good insight into into the bigger picture of it um, but I was also uh, I loved listening to the artists of the time like the police and, and people like that so. yeah do, do you actively also you know sort of give advice to to the talent or you know help coach them along yeah for sure I think sometimes people have got the wrong idea of of what they what they're doing musicians sometimes are their, their worst enemies um, because they do want to do it for the love of it and the enjoyment of it. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you're creating, um, such as in, in, in the bigger scope of being uh, an agent, they create clients um, that believe that they can get cheap entertainment, um, therefore it, it affects everyone down the line. Um, if you're good and you're professional and you're doing it as a job, um, and that's what it should be seen as if, you, if you're, you're getting paid for it, you need to be doing it yeah. properly. Um, and is that some of the challenges in live music today? Uh, I think so. I think uh, there is a certain challenge w saying, well, say in the, p in, the, in the public area, in the, in the pubs and taverns, where managers expect the musicians to create this vibe for them and, and bring people in. It's not like that. It's good entertainers will keep a crowd and keep them entertained. Mm -hmm. um, great musicians, um, if you're musically very good an instrument, that doesn't mean that you're an entertainer. There's a bigger package um, that, that needs to be looked at. And of course, I mean, a great entertainer can be almost gold to a venue, can't it? A great entertainer is, is gold to a venue because yeah. that's, somebody once said to me that we're a glorified alcohol salesman. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think publicans look at us like that in a, yeah. in a way. 
Well, look, thank you so much for joining us on the uh, the program today. And, uh, mate, uh, it's going to be uh, great to see you out there performing as well, I'm sure. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and to give you a little idea of the sort of talent that uh, Trevor does have on his books with Queensland Entertainment, here is just one of those groups, the Hussy Hicks.
Uh, that's the Hussy Hicks, an update fantastic. Well, thanks to my guest, Wayne Wendt from the Ipswich Jets, Greg Hinks, and also Trevor Scobie from Queensland Entertainment. I look forward to your company next time, and we'll stay connected.